I'm all for masks. I think masks are good. I would wear, if I were in a group of people and I was close. You would wear one? Oh, I would, I would, oh, I have. I mean, people have seen me wearing one. Well, welcome back to American Agenda. That was President Trump in an interview with Fox Business having what seems to be a change of heart after being criticized by other politicians for not wearing a mask in public. The president is now saying he's all for them, although he does not think a federal mandate is necessary. Having other politicians sway him, have they done? Have they swayed him on this issue to weigh in? We welcome our A-plus panel for the hour, editor-in-chief of the National Memo, Joe Connison, and Republican strategist, uh, Bob Everly. Bob, let's start with you. Uh, Seems like masks have become political. Yeah, absolutely. And I wish it wouldn't be the case like that. I mean, I wish the president wouldn't be questioned on things like this. I mean, for one thing, what he said in that interview is absolutely right. I mean, this guy is tested himself every day. Those who come in contact with him are tested. So there's no need for him to be out there wearing a mask, especially because of the thing that people say most often is that, oh, it's not to protect yourself, it's to protect others. Well, he doesn't have it and no one near him has it. So it doesn't make any sense. And plus, to have a mask mandate, one, in our constitutional republic, that you can't mandate people to wear a mask. And two, this country shows from the stats, from the COVID deaths and cases, that one size does not fit all. If you compare New York to Texas, you can just see the vast difference when you have a state that has 165 deaths per 100,000, like New York. Then you have Texas, the second most populous state, has eight. And it just, it doesn't make sense to have a policy where if everybody's compact and they say you do need masks to then mandate it for the rest of the country when clearly you don't. Joe, I think when it comes to masks, a lot of people are saying it's, it's more setting an example for those that do want to wear a mask. Yes, everything that I just heard uh, Mr. Eberly say is wrong. Uh, the president needed to set an example by putting on a mask instead of claiming as he did last month, that the reason people wear masks is, is to somehow denigrate him or show that they're against him. That was precisely the wrong message. It uh, cost people's lives every day that he went around trying to uh, push back yeah, against Joe, masks. Joe, I'm, I'm sure you're aware last night he kind of backed off that and said he was okay with yeah, masks. It's, it's, yeah, the 100, 130,000 people are now dead. And we have the prospect of another 130,000 dead before election day. So it's a bit late. He's a, he's a day late and many dollars short. So, yes, it's good that he finally came around to saying, well, yes, I've always been for mask wearing. It's not true, but hey, you know, we'll take what we can get. But the idea that, you know, people don't need to wear masks or somehow uh, the government shouldn't be telling people to wear masks is a lot of nonsense. We tell people to pay their taxes. We tell people to wear seat belts. We tell people all kinds of things. The government can't really force people to wear masks. As the governor of New York uh, pointed out, it was a matter of persuading people. But Trump has done the opposite, and it's been incredibly destructive. Bob, give you a chance to respond. Well, yeah, there was a whole lot of nonsense right there, too, because, first of all, he mis mixed mandates with requirements or suggestions. I mean, seatbelt laws, there's no federal seatbelt law. That is a state-by-state -state basis. And what Nancy Pelosi and what Joe Biden are talking about is a national mandate, a national law for masks. And you can't do that. And it, again, it doesn't make any sense when you have highly dense areas that show big concentrations of COVID cases and deaths and very spread out areas that don't. To mandate that nationwide is very, very bad policy and it doesn't solve the problem. Again, yes, there's been a lot of deaths, but the people that are affected are a very, very small population that you can keep safe and they can keep themselves yeah, safe. Yeah, let me ask you this, Bobby. shutting down Bobby, the economy Bobby, and let me, altering I don't know if you can hear me. else's lives. Bobby, I don't know if you can hear me, uh, but why do you think some of the Republican governors are uh, encouraging their people to wear masks now? Well, I think it's because there is a reaction driven by the media and a lot of things because of these spikes. You know, the president just announced his great economic numbers for June, you know, close to 5 million people going back to work. Well, guess what? These places aren't going to just open irresponsibly and not test. They are going to be testing. There's more tests available in general. So you're going to get more cases. But that doesn't need to be a reason to freak out when the vast, vast, vast majority of people who get this will have 
as the stats never have changed, 85% will have little to no symptoms. Most people can go about their daily work, their daily lives without even being affected by this. Know the people that are vulnerable, respect those people. Those people take precautions and the rest can go on with their lives. But they see the media, they see what's driving this, they see the cases and all of a sudden they shut down. And I, for one, am very frustrated and hate to see it because you've got people that were told you're non-essential. You've got people who were told your business has to shut down. In Texas, they start opening back up and all of a sudden they're told to shut down again. Yeah. How is a person supposed to live their life or make a payroll or feed their family with this kind of policy? Right. Okay. Joe? Yeah. Well, it probably would have been better not to open recklessly and too soon in the first place. Uh, that is what has caused this spike and, and the reason that they have to shut down again. I mean, that's the, the fault of the terrible uh, misguided governor of Texas who followed the Trump uh, example from the beginning and minimized all of this and, and realized now that he's in a lot of trouble. You know, the hospitals in Houston are full up now. They've quadrupled the number of people in, in them with COVID since Memorial Day. So, you know, let's let's be real about this. People are getting sick, people are dying, and yes, not everybody in the country needs to wear a mask all the time, but it, we would be much better off if many more people were wearing masks when they're in those kinds of situations most of the time. And it's a good thing that the president and even the governor of Texas, uh, bless his heart, has figured this out now. Joe, how long should Texas and Florida and the other states, how long should they have stayed shut down? Well, they needed to be shut down until they had a, a reopening plan that made sense, which would have included uh, some kind of mask mandate or, or at least the strong encouragement by the state of everybody to wear masks outside. You know, masks, I guess they seem terrible to some people. They undermine the masculinity of some of our, you know, more insecure friends. But the truth is the masks are the way to reopen. Okay, I, Joe, I just wanted to give Bobby a chance before the end of the segment. Bobby, 15 seconds before we go. Absolutely. Well, first of all, Trump's opinion on masks has changed because the CDC's opinion on masks has changed. The Surgeon General has said one thing in February, March, and April, and a different thing now. So it has evolved over time. And the guidelines Texas used were not Trump guidelines. They were CDC's reopening plan from the Coronavirus Task Force itself. All right. All right. Bobby and Joe? Uh, thank you so much for a great conversation. Very interesting. Thank you, gentlemen. And folks, we'll be back with more of American Agenda after this. Okay, friends, thanks so much for watching. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you'll be notified. And here's a special video just for you so you can watch even more of the 13-minute news hour. And don't forget to check out GOPUSA.com for the best in conservative news and commentary. We'll see you next time.